So I've got a rundown of post 1.5, the 48 iconic weapons that you can get in the game. I love that scene. Now, it's impossible to make this video without spoilers, so be warned. And some of them, there are multiple ways of getting them. You can go back and get them, things like that. But this is just basically where you find them and a very brief look at their animations. Okay, to start with, we have Apparition. You can get this on the Corpo Life Path only, which seems funny, actually, because there isn't one you can only get on Nomad or Street Kid, as far as I know. Anyway, that is what it is. If you didn't speak to this guy in the Corpo Rat Life Path intro, then you won't actually be able to help him out in this quest. But if you are able to help him and do the right things, you won't get the gun. So if you fail the quest, you, you get the gun, basically. So it, it is what it is. And this is the gun. It's a tech pistol that monitors its user's vitals. That's pretty fun. Okay, so next up we have a really nice shotgun with bottle caps on it. Kind of has a bit of a fallout kind of vibe. Uh, it's the Bloody Maria, and you get this from finishing off Captain Reyes's gigs, and you just collect it in your apartment. It's a nice looking shotgun. This was added in 1.5. Okay, next up we have Skippy. Now, this is not really missable now because they have a quest icon for it, but if you look at my other videos, uh, you'll have probably heard about Skippy. Um, there's a lot to this one. It's probably one of the most fun, interesting weapons in the game, and it has its own quest tied to it. So it's a pistol, and this is where you find it. Is where the like, arrow is there. The fuck? Increasing volume. Okay. Next up, we have Buzzsaw, and you get it from this suspected organized crime boss in this area here, and it's a power submachine gun. This one is a crafting spec, so you'll only actually be able to use it if you have. Uh, crafting. It's got that banana clip in the back, a real rat attack. Okay, next we have the reward from Wakako, and it's the Biako, and it's a really awesome samurai sword. You will have seen more details on this one in my katanas video. It lets you leap towards the enemies. It's pretty nice looking. Okay, next up we have Chaos, and you get this from defeating Royce in the quest to pick up Simon Royce Randall. It's a tech pistol, like Lizzie, that can be used to charge up a powerful shot. Okay, next up, you can get this one in the space in between. Uh, you just basically grab it from uh, the table in Finger's room, and it's Cotton Mouth. It's an electrically charged weapon tipped with venom, so it does electrical and chemical damage. A nasty piece of work, just like the owner, or ex-owner, should I say. It's classed as a club. Okay, next up we have Death and Taxes. This was originally supposed to be another one. You can actually find this one later on a second time in Judy's apartment in her computer room. But there was uh, another one that was removed from the game, and I think that was supposed to be this one, but you just get this one instead. It's a power pistol. You get it during the quest X Factor when you're talking to Miko. It's just there on her table. Okay, next up there's your starting weapon, the Dying Knight. A really nice looking little pistol, and you get it at the very start of the game, just when you're walking past the Second Amendment for the first time. Wilson calls you in, yeah. and you can just go and get it off him for free. It's a nice little pistol, really rapid firing. I've got a little sight on it here, the sight looks a bit daft though. Okay, next up we have Divided We Stand. You get this from a job called Stadium Love in Rancho Coronado, um, just near where the dam is. And it's uh, another shooting quest. This one's actually a little bit more fun than Wilson's one. You can't cheese this one. You have to use the weapon you're given. So it might take you a couple of tries to get it, but uh, you'll get there eventually. There you go, so it's got the uh, NUSA flag on the uh, clip or magazine. Uh, there it is. Okay, so for the... What is going on? Oh, jeez. In public? I mean, for God's sake, man. So you get this little job from the monk here in North Watson along the docks there. And it's to basically rescue his brother. And uh, in that, on the table next to the person you're trying to rescue, you will find the next one. The side job is losing my religion. And there's the weapon. It's Fenrir. A ferocious little submachine gun that deals thermal damage. It's got the Maelstrom iconography on it. Okay, next up we have Sir John Falastiv. Now you'll not be able to get this one at all, as far as I know. You can't get this one if you screw over Meredith Stout, but if you work with her during the quest to pick up later in Act 2, she'll contact you for a quest. I'm sure you know about it, and I'm sure you found the weapon. It's one of the funniest weapons in the game, I think. <laughs> Even the animation for your first time drawing out is ridiculous. I hope V wiped it down first. You know, let's be blunt about it. Obviously, it's base humor, but you know what? It's a bit of humor. It's welcome. Okay, next up, we have Lizzie. A really awesome little tech pistol. 
once you're into automatic love, uh, you can actually get hold of Lizzie. Once you just go back down, it's uh, at the bottom of Lizzie's bar in that small room with the table on the same level as Judy's editing suite. So just go and have a dig around there. You'll find it. It's a really nice little weapon, I have to say. Okay, next up is Overwatch. You get this during the quest Riders in the Storm at the very end of the quest. It basically, Pan Am gives it to you. So, uh, so uh, one of the best sniper rifles in the game. It's got a massive scope. Everyone loves a massive scope, right? The reload is painfully slow. That's the only thing. Okay, next up is Satori. As you'll know again from my Katana's video, you get this one during the quest The Heist. Just before you go out on the balcony with Jackie, head back and go up the inside stairs and go up to the AV platform where it is inside the AV. It's a gorgeous looking samurai sword, very traditional looking. And uh, yeah, it has some awesome stats. It deals really huge crit damage, so it's amazing. Okay, next up we have Cocktail Stick. This is another one you can get during the quest Automatic Love, but you can also come back afterwards, climb through the window and get it then. It's basically Evelyn's. It's a very pink samurai sword anyway, or katana. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice looking. If you're, if you're looking for something matte pink in the sword area. Okay, next up is 05. You get this one for doing Beat on the Brat Arroyo. And um, after things turn sour, just go around and get your reward. Nobody likes a sore loser, do they? So it's a power sniper rifle and uh, really nice damage to it. Just with other sniper rifles, it's just slow as anything. It's very similar to Pan Am's one, Overwatch. Okay, next. Okay, yeah, this one's very easily missed actually because uh, you need to do a quest called I'll Fly Away. As long as you do that quest, you get automatically given the weapon. It's a dagger or a knife, should I say, and it used to belong to Scorpion and it's now yours and it's called Stinger. Like this little good luck charm. If you're into throwing knives, you can do worse. And of course, being Scorpion Stinger, it has chemical damage. There it is. Okay, next up we have Plan B. And you can find it exactly where you'd expect to find it. It's basically where Takamura left him, waiting for you. And even if you can't find it during the mission Cold Mirage, you go out there and you come across it then. Uh, just like its owner, it's covered in bling and it screws you over. Every bullet costs you eddies. So oh, it's a bit of a ridiculous one, but you know, if you're feeling exuberant, reminds me of that Chris Rock joke. Okay, next up is Mox. You get this one once you've finished Judy's quest line. Uh, it's basically in her apartment waiting for you on her kitchen table. Seems a dangerous place to leave a weapon if you ask me, but it's a really nice shotgun. It's got such a hefty punch to it. I mean, it really does feel like this industrial kind of, like Necromundan kind of just, oh, powerful, chunky, love it. Job's done. Okay, next up we have the scalpel. You get this one from Big in Japan. And uh, yeah, there it is. Again, this one's in my katanas video. Love katanas. Okay, next up is another one you can get in Riders on the Storm. You get this during the quest. You have to kill the main guy in the outside part of the compound and he has it on him. It's called Problem Solver. And uh, again, it's a power submachine gun. It's not unlike Fenrir and it's got a ridiculous <laughs> rate of fire, 15.83 attacks per second. And as a result, a ridiculous recoil. Check it out. Look at it walking all the way up to the moon. huh? <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Uh, the next one is Sumatogi, and uh, you get this during the quest Pisces. One way or another, you should be able to grab this one. It's on the table there. It's either going to be used against you, or you're going to be picking it up afterwards, one or the other. Depending on your outcome, it will be there for you. Oh, this one's very early on in the game. Before you get Satori, when you first enter Yurinobu's penthouse suite, if you go around to his bedside table, you'll find his pistol there. Kongu. I don't know if that's pronounced right. So make sure to nab it then. Very much in the same kind of vein as Dex's in style. Okay, the next one is one you can also get in a couple of places. You can get it in this location from Redwood Market, but you can also get it if you're doing the Arasaka ending on the table in, I think it's probably Yorinobu's office in his estate. You can either open it using your tech score, or if you look around, there are numbers on doors in the area, which when combined, give you the code for the keypad. It's a smart pistol which can target up to six targets simultaneously, which is pretty incredible, really. But uh, there you go. Okay, next up we have one that's really easy to miss. It's not on a quest. Uh, you can get it anytime, I think, after, down on the street. But um, this is where you get it anyway, in this Arasaka compound here. Make sure to... Do uh, <clears throat> 
You didn't see that, right? Make sure to defuse that mine. And then uh, it's in the box just around the corner. It's the prototype Shingen Mark V or Mark V. And uh, that's a nice little uh, smart submachine gun. Really has that kind of experimental tech feel to it. Sci-fi-ish. You know, I like it. And it has the bullet readout, which is always welcome. Okay, next up we have one that's missable, but it should be there if you go back, I'd imagine. But uh, it's Widowmaker, and it drops from the main guy in Ghost Town, who's up top. So when you take him out, you can get his... It's a really nice precision rifle. I mean, just the styling of it and nothing else, but it's powerful as hell. I love these precision rifles, the, the tech rifles. They're so good. They charge up and shoot through stuff with them, and they're just super powerful. I love them. And they have a real kind of futuristic look to them. Okay, the next we can get where this NCPD suspected organized crime activity is. And again, this one is a crafting spec. So you'll only actually be able to use it if you have uh, crafting. You only have to craft the blue level of it. So that's rare. So that should be easy enough to get even without much in tech. And it's the SAM 1160. I haven't looked into what that actually refers to, but I've got a scope on it here, but you get the idea. And I've got a silencer. But it's a nice little rifle. I used it for quite a bit on and off. Now, this one is very, very easy to miss. You get it on one of the endings, knocking on heaven's door. When you're at the conference table, just before you head to the lift, if you go to the right into the jungle a little bit, I say jungle, is it jungle? I guess it is. You'll see it leaning there against a rock. And it's the caretaker's spade. Quite a vicious blunt weapon. Although it looks quite sharp on the edge. Well, it's got some heft to it. I mean, anyone who's used a decent shovel or spade knows the weight to them. Imagine wielding that thing, crikey. Okay, next up we have Kerry's Gun Archangel. You, should hang on to this, actually. you get that on the quest, I like Supreme at the end anyway. He has no use for it anymore, so he hands it over to you. Chunky Power Revolver. Okay, this is another suspected organized crime activity one, and uh, it's the crafting spec for the headsman. And you'll notice there in the crafting window, it doesn't even say iconic, but it is actually an iconic one. Uh, you'll see once it's crafted, but there's just an error in the labeling in the crafting window. It's a fairly standard shotgun, really. Do you know what? It reminds me of the one from Terminator 2, especially with the way she reloads it on the first animation, one-handed cocking it. Wonder if it is. Okay, next up we have Sovereign. You get this one from another suspected organized crime activity and it's a crafting spec again, so you need to be able to craft it. And there you go. Double barreled shotgun. Not much to say about that one. Okay, next up we have another suspected organized crime activity one. And this one is from Pacifica, the furthest south one is the Moron Labe. I don't know if that's pronounced right, it sounds funny. Kind of industrial looking again. Kind of very industrial looking power assault rifle with the uh, AK look to it. All black, of course, though. But yeah, again, this one walks its way up to the sky. I wonder is it pronounced more on Labe or Labe or what? Anyway. Okay, yet another suspected organized crime one that gives you a crafting spec. Again, this one's in Rancho. And uh, it's the crafting spec for Breakthrough. It's actually a really nice sniper rifle really really looks like it should be something out of alien or something it's just so chunky it looks like a rail gun or something the reload seems a bit quicker than uh, things like overwatch as well okay another suspected organized crime one from this guy that looks like a predator uh, he has the yinglong which is a smart submachine gun very rapid fire really great reload animation Okay, another suspected organized crime one. This one is Comrade's Hammer. This is a single shot pistol that packs a whopping punch per shot. And oh my God, is it hefty. Practicality, I'm not so sure about, but uh, yeah, it's inefficiency of <laughs> reloading with every shot is completely daft though. Okay, next one is River's Gun, Crash. It kind of feels he's got no need for it anymore, so he hands it over to you. This is on uh, the quest Chasing the River or Following the River. Um, again, very much like Kerry's Revolver, same kind of deal. Hefty, kicks like a mule, doesn't have to reload as many times as Comrade's Hammer. Honestly, I know which one I would go for. 
Okay, next up is a melee one. It's the gold-plated baseball bat that you get towards the end of Second Conflict. And you just grab it from the swimming pool there. It's been dropped in it and uh, in the cement, which hasn't set yet, luckily. Okay, this is probably one of the most iconic ones. It's Johnny's Malorian Arms pistol. It shouldn't really be. Uh, it's a bit bugged there. It's kind of hovering in the air, which is unusual. But anyway, here it is. Got a really, really epic animation for the reload. Just really slick. Okay, the next one is Prejudice, one of Rogue's two weapons. An automatic rifle, and it really looks like something that could be out of Halo or something like that. It's got a real kind of great kind of vibe to it. And it's uh, got so many upgrade slots. And this one, unfortunately, you don't get to take through, and it's only for the end game. Okay, next on the hunt, you'll find Tinkerbell. Jesus, Tinkerbell. Now, this one is hidden in behind this door here. I have never once used this one and I don't intend to. Do not like this quest or anything involved with it. Uh, it's non-lethal and it's a blunt weapon. Just the thought of... yeah. Moving on. Next up we have one of my favourite katanas, the Jinchu Maru, and you get this one from Oda. And uh, yeah, I used this for my most recent endgame. It's so epic. With all my bonuses, it was like 2,200 DPS. Amazing. And the crits, it's brilliant. Okay, the next one is Adam Smasher's Shotgun. Now, you get this one after you come back into the world, after having completed an ending. Um, and I, unfortunately, couldn't find my save where I had a crafting spec V who could actually get in and get this one. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check out videos of it in action, you have to go elsewhere. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the next one as well, I have never sided with Maelstrom, so I've always killed off Dum Dum. But if you don't kill off Dum Dum and you side with Maelstrom, later on, early on in Second Conflict, when you meet Dum Dum again, if you kill him, you get his weapon, Doom Doom. So this is just from the wiki showing you information about that. It's the only one I've never actually gotten. There you go. Okay, this is one called Amnesty, and you get it from Cassidy in the endgame quest, We Gotta Live Together. So there's a little bit of a bottle shooting challenge you gotta go through to get it. And again, it's another revolver, 666 DPS. I don't think that's coincidence. There you go. So it's a six shooter, 666. Yeah. Okay, for completing all of Padre's gigs, you get a quest, God bless this mess, and you just have to go to your stash in your apartment to grab this, and it's the pistol Seraph. And it's a power pistol, very kind of classy look to it. Very again, much in the same kind of frame as uh, Dex's. It's got some nice detailing on the top. Okay, penultimately we have Jackie's. Now there's two you can grab here. I only ever take one of them. Obviously he had two pistols and I didn't want to take them both. But La Chingo Dorada. You can't dual wield, so I don't know why you'd want to take both. So I left one anyway, but uh, there you go. It's completely bling. It's Jackie all over really, isn't it? It's ostentatious. Now, finally, we have Pride. That's right, Rogue's two weapons are Pride and Prejudice. There you go, there's an Easter egg. But yeah, you get it. It's optional to pick it up, you can miss it, but it's one that does carry through into your next playthrough if you do pick it up, so I recommend you do. Basically, after killing Adam Smasher, you can go and pick up Rogue's gun. Again, it's got that Desert Eagle kind of, same look as Dex's or Seraph, but it's all business. Got one bullet left. Let you guess what I did with that. And here it is, there it is with a bit of a scope on it, as with the scope gone. Fairly standard looking. But there you go, that's it, that's all of them. Just as a little addendum there, if you are looking to fill out your stash, one wall is purely from collected weapons, and the other wall is purely from crafted weapons. So if you want to kit out your whole stash, you need to be able to craft weapons, otherwise you can't kit it out. Um, and also, you have to hold on to Skippy and not give Skippy back, otherwise you'll have an empty slot where he's supposed to be as well. So it's up to you. But there you go, that's the two walls and that's how you kit them out. I hope that uh, helps you find the ones you want, or if not, that is at least interesting. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care and thank you very much for watching. Bye, folks.